despite all the goalkeeper's efforts. Football! No, not that one. I mean real football. Foosball, football, football, calcio, soccer. It's the most popular game on planet Earth and every video game system needs a good football game. Sega bestowed one upon the Saturn in its early life with Victory Goal, which was localized to Sega Worldwide Soccer in the US and then renamed again as International Victory Goal in Power Regions before it was revised yet again with the slightly upgraded Japan-only Sega International Victory Goal. It was a mostly 2D affair using 3D sprite scaling techniques. It was okay, but the real game changer came in 1996 with the excellent Victory Goal 96, which was localized as the sensational Sega Worldwide Soccer 97, a game that at the time was hailed as the greatest football game on any system. This was followed up with no less than five sequels on the Saturn, culminating with the outstanding World Cup 98 Road to Win. Sega Worldwide Soccer had a rough transition to Dreamcast though, with the thoroughly flawed Sega Worldwide Soccer 2000 getting a mixed reception. In response, Sega produced a Euro Edition update, which would look to solve all of the issues of the previous game and tie in with the then current Euro 2000 tournament. This is Dan the Mega Driver, one half of the Sega guys, and I'm asking the question, could Worldwide Soccer become the premier football game once more. Let's take a look. So first, a bit of background. Victory Goal was first created by Sega's first party team, Team Aquila, who coded the first five entries to the series. From Victory Goal 97, development duties were handed over to longtime Sega developer Sims for the next entries. All the while, Silicon Dreams created the flat shaded Olympic Soccer in 1996. Published by US Gold, this game went over quite well with critics and was followed up with the excellent looking World League Soccer 98, which was actually published by Sega themselves in Power Regions. This partnership went well enough that despite Silicon Dreams creating sequels to World League Soccer on PS1 and Nintendo 64, they were commissioned for creating the Dreamcast follow-up to the legendary World Wide Soccer series. Unfortunately, Sega World Wide Soccer 2000 was a bit of a mess. Out of date looking character models, clumsy gameplay and frequent bouts of slowdown made this a considerably below par entry to the series. This was reflected in the scores that meant it was the worst received of the entire series so far, even below the debuting 16 team Victory Goal here. series way early in the Saturn's life. The pass is a good Given one. that Sega Europe had sponsored quite a few teams and spent a pretty penny Ronaldo. on marketing the Dreamcast within the sphere of European football, well, they wide. needed a decent football game out and they needed one fast. Fortunately, an opportunity arose just six months later with the 2000 European Championships. Euro 2000 provided the perfect excuse for a Silicon Dreams do-over, allowing them to update the flawed previous game, tie it in with a major football tournament and turn the Dreamcast into the next-gen football machine of choice. Starting the game, the signs are promising, with a CGI intro that suggests improved time and budget over the original. Though tonally, the Latin-inspired audio and pan-European iconography doesn't really represent a tournament hosted in the Netherlands and Belgium. Like previous games in the World League Soccer and Worldwide Soccer series, we have a host of leagues and teams to choose from, tons of modes and tournaments, and even licensed player names. Sadly, this is represented in a very dull UI, which displays none of the polish and style that we saw in the Saturn Worldwide Soccer games. That may be a nitpick, but it does say a lot about the game that you're playing. It feels functional, but uninspired. Still, things pick up when you're in the game proper. Players now look so much better than the previous game. Gone are the really angular models that look like dumps from the PS1 and N64 games, and in their place are far smoother and detailed players with good articulation. They may look simple by today's standards, but in the middle of the year 2000, this was probably the best looking football game on the market. Stadiums are impressive, as is the use of lighting for time of day. There's some great use of shadow and a nice variety of arenas to play in as well. Weather makes an appearance too and the results really do add to the experience, though why I got snow and ice so much in the middle of a summer football tournament is a bit of a mystery. 
Unfortunately, while we do have real player names, there's no real likenesses or kits on show. So most of the teams and players end up looking very generic when you're up close. Presentation of the game is much improved though. There's a real TV-like feel to the proceedings. The score display looks like something authentic of the era and the advertisers dotted around the stadium also give you that sense of realism. Commentary is fine. Peter Brackley does a decent enough job, much more convincing than Carrie Bloom's worldwide soccer stint, but perhaps lacking the personality that made his games so memorable. Trevor Brooking and Peter's Football Italia cohort James Richardson bookend the matches with introductions and post-half analysis which, again, gives the game a real TV-like air of authenticity. How did you rate Romania, James? Romania have disappointed Peter. If they continue like that, the best they can hope for a draw. What does it look like to you, Trevor? Well, I've been disappointed with them, James, because uh, usually they're much more creative in midfield. So it looks great, and the presentation is convincing from an audio-visual perspective. How does it play? Pretty well, actually. This is a far faster and smoother experience than the previous game. In fact, this moves at a pace more akin to the original Olympic soccer game, a title lauded for its fast and furious arcade gameplay. The basics are there. You can pass with the A button, while shoot and chip are assigned to X and B buttons by default. You can sprint and do tricks with the trigger buttons. And a great addition to the 32-bit games is the through ball, something pioneered by ISS Pro and ISS 64. It's not quite as well realized as in those games, but finding a runner and threading through a weighted pass into their path is really satisfying. Crosses work well too, though they feel a bit more haphazard than the Saturn titles, where it was probably a little bit too easy to meet the cross with a header. Here, we see players perform all sorts of madcap acrobatics and overhead kicks, which almost always sail well past the target. Defending, meanwhile, feels just as frantic. Dispossessing players and tackling feels actually incredibly loose, and often it's a lottery whether you'll hold on to the ball after a challenge. And sadly, that works both ways, and the ground game really lets the experience down somewhat. It's far too easy to dance or fumble past players and score. Whereas hoofing a shot in most football games sees it lifted into the sky, in Worldwide Soccer Euro Edition, it's pretty much rooted to the floor. The upshot of this is that once you're in the penalty area, you simply have to hammer a shot into the opposite corner of the goal. It will sail underneath the goalkeeper and you'll score almost every time. And so it becomes far too easy to score against the CPU. There's no way I should be winning 7-0 in the European Cup Final on the default settings. But here we are. Thankfully, with more humans in tow, the game really comes into its own. And you and your friends will enjoy no shortage of barnstorming games that end up with hockey scores. You can in fact play almost every mode with your friends and all compete in the various competitions. In terms of content, this game absolutely delivers a full Euro 2000 experience with the proper teams and the groups and even the schedule. You have so many leagues and team options that you would be entertained for months on end if you felt so inclined. And with a few friends back in the day, this game certainly had the legs to carry it through. With solid presentation and fun gameplay, this was hands down the best soccer game on the Dreamcast at the time. Sadly, there are far too many flaws to make it an all time great. The gameplay is fast, fun and loose but it still pales in comparison to the tighter international superstar soccer, the Pro Evolution games, and even the 32-bit Worldwide Soccer titles. And sadly, this would be where the Worldwide Soccer series ended, as this would be the last title in the series, though there would be one more sequel, but under a different name. And unfortunately, even then, this game does feel like an entry to the series in name only. Every single criticism here can be levelled at Olympic and World League Still soccer. This is, effectively, an extremely similar experience to those early games with the same frantic and fun gameplay, but ultimately, the same heavy flaws. However, as far as official games go, this is far more fun than the official EA Develops counterpart. And if you want to relive a tournament from nearly a quarter of a century ago with some madcap arcade-style gameplay, you will certainly have some fun with this one. This has been Dan the Mega Driver of the Sega Guys, and we will see you on the Sega side.